going, guys? Offline Gamer here, and today I'm bringing you a game that was one of my 2013 most anticipated games that I was dying to get to, um, and that is Zolkin the Mayan Calendar, uh, made by Danielle Tassini and Simone Luciani. Um, it's a worker placement game that has some unique aspects to it, which you will see when I do my component breakdown and everything, um, and we'll... Uh, take a look at how the game itself plays, my thoughts on what I like about the game, what I may not like about the game, but let's find out. Let's take a look at the game itself, see how it plays, and then we'll come back here for my final thoughts. Alrighty guys, here you have a setup for Zulkin the Mayan Calendar. Now, there's a lot to kind of go over here on the board. So I will go ahead and explain it in uh, sections so you understand. So when you look at here, you have the main uh, gear that represents the time of the actual game. So it starts on, there's little four sections here. There's little two blue and two brown. They represent different ages of the um, time table as it goes along, um, as well as uh, when you would need to feed your people, as well as when you collect resources and points based on where you are on your tracks and things like that, which I'll explain as I go along. So as like a turn goes by, this gear will actually turn one, and you can see the arrow here represents where it marks it, and it actually has some numbers on the board itself that actually let you know how many turns there are until you get to the next age, which is kind of neat in uh, helping you out with your planning. So around the outside of the board itself, you have your scoring track, um, which you'll uh, use to keep track of your points. It goes up to about 100. I don't think I've ever played a game where we've probably scored more than 75 or so. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if they do come out with... Um, expansions and stuff to make it that you can actually go over the 100. Um, so depending on which colored wheel um, gear you put your workers on, and your workers, uh, I'll show you here, are represented by like little cylinders um, to represent your workers, which they fit right into the little um, divots that are in the gears themselves. So the way that this works is on your turn, um, you can either place or pick up a worker. So it's kind of interesting where you have to do one or the other. So you don't want to just spend an entire turn just dumping all your, your workers out because the next turn you're going to have to pick them up. And the longer that a worker sits on a gear, the better the results. So the green gear uh, is what's going to give you either wood or corn. Um, you have to understand in this game, corn not only represents your food, it also represents your currency. Um, so you will... Uh, need some corn throughout the game. Um, now, when placing out on the gears, um, well, let me explain the, the, the different gears. Uh, your brown gear here is going to give you resources, uh, strict resources. It'll have here like wood, stone with corn, gold with corn, the little crystal skulls, uh, which you will use for points. I'll explain that in the little gear, which I'll show you those guys. They look really, really cool. Um, that's probably like one of the coolest things of these of this game itself is the actual little crystal skulls um, molded really really nicely um, and then uh, your reddish um, gear is gonna advance you on like your technology tracks uh, which I'll explain to you allow you to build buildings which I'll explain to you um, so it's kind of interesting it'll let you uh, trade in goods to move along the god tracks as well um, your yellow lets you uh, trade resources for corn. Uh, you can get uh, advancements on like the technology tracks. You can get an extra worker, um, things like that. And then your blue uh, gear is essentially going to be advancing on God track as well as getting victory points, um, just straight up victory points. Um, so in setting up the game, everybody gets uh, three um, three workers, and you get some corn to start out with. Now, um, when you're setting up, you actually get these little um, tiles, which actually have different like starting resources. You get three of them, um, and you get to choose which one you want to use um, to start off with. Um, you have, on this section of the board right here, are there's three different god tracks. 
So depending on how high you are on the God Track itself, it will get you at certain scoring points, which are the brown uh, points, which are twice a game. You'll get victory points based on how high you are on the track, as well as any resources at the level and everything below um, your the, the, the track you're on. Now, the thing that's interesting with this game is you actually have this little, like, player board, which kind of explains a little bit, uh, like, what you have to do on you know, on certain times of the track, like when you have to feed and things like that. But also, if you notice, it's dark on one side and it's lighter on the other side. The reason being is, at one point per, while you're going, and as long as you have it dark like that, you can sit there and um, actually advance the gear two ticks instead of one. Which is really interesting because it will play into the strategy of you're getting close to the end of the game, you want to force that end game situation to happen, so you tick the the the, uh, the gears forward an extra step to kind of give your opponent less time. Now, the interesting thing about these god tracks here is, if you actually rent your marker all the way to the top of the god track, you can actually flip back over from the light side to the dark side again, which means you'll get a second opportunity to be able to advance the gear twice. Um, now this uh, set of tracks here, this four tracks here is your technology track. Um, it'll either help you out in getting more food resources, more resource resources, or um, the abilities to do specific things like for victory points and stuff like that. Now there's four spots here. Um, you will basically advance up to like the third one. Once you get the chance where you advance to the fourth one, you'll actually just go forward and then come back again. So if you advance again, you just keep going back and forth there and keep getting that last benefit. And then the last section of the board here is actually there's a, a certain buildings. There's what they call monuments, which when you set up the game, you're going to put six of them out. Um, and that's all that's going to actually come out. And the rest are going to go right back into the box. Um, these are going to be like buildings that are going to be more like end game scoring type of uh, buildings. You won't see too many people grabbing these early on. It's going to be more towards the later game. And then the regular buildings, you have two different types of buildings. There's uh, ones that have like a red spot, uh, a red backing with one dot and one that kind of has like a brownish backing with two spots. That depends on what age you're on. So uh, when you're in the first half of the game, well, it's on the first side here. You're in the first stage. Once you get to the point where this uh, does half a turn, you're actually going to take all these like level one buildings off, and you're going to just use level two buildings. So to start out, you'll flip over like six of them to represent different things. So you'll like you'll see that when you have the buildings out, it's going to be a lot less resources for those buildings. Um, like this one. For four wood, you can actually feed one corn to all of your workers, which is great because when you look at it, it just so happens there's two of them out on the board. Um, and when you get to the feeding phase, you actually have to pay two corn per uh, worker that you have. If you actually get those two farms, you essentially now don't have to worry about using your corn as your currency. You just can use it, or uh, not as your uh, food um, you don't have to worry about using it as your food. You can just use it as currency. So it's an advantage of trying to get those um, those farms. So I'm going around the, the board. Um, in the green one, the different spots that they have will tell you how much um, corn you'll get. Now, uh, what's interesting is going from the, the third um, section to the fourth and the fifth section, you actually, it shows... An amount of corn, but also a slash, and then wood. So what that means is, on these sections here, um, in the setup, there's going to be like a little corn tile, and there's going to be like a little wood tile on top of the corn tile. So what it basically means is, um, in that area, when the wood is on top, that means that the area that you would normally grow the corn in is forested, so you have to clear out the forest first. So the first time you go there, you would pick up that little wood to... Um, tile and leave the corn underneath and you'll pick up uh, wood instead of corn. But now, let's say 
You get to that section, you desperately need corn, you don't want to pick up the wood. What you can do is what they call burning the forest. So you would take this little wood tile and discard it. You wouldn't pick up the, the wood, but you could then pick up the corn. However, because you burned the forest to get to the corn, it angers the gods and you would actually have to move down one on one of these god tracks. So that's kind of your penalty for uh, destroying the forest just to get to your food. Um, now, one of the things that's pretty interesting about this game is the longer you leave your character on the gear, the better the reward is as it goes ticking around. So if you notice, my little blue guy here is going around and around and further. Now, on every one of the, the gears themselves, once you get to like the end two ones, if you notice it, it's essentially just a picture of a frame with the color of the gear that you're on. Um, what that essentially means is if you leave a player on there, like you don't pick them up, uh, once they get to that certain point and you pick that, that character up, what ends up happening is you can perform any action on that actual wheel. So sometimes if you were going for one and you happen to like, oops, I forgot to pick him up, if you leave him there long enough, you can go back and pick something else. Now, What's interesting is, if your guy makes a trip all the way around to the last one, and then advances once more the gear, you will actually lose any action on that, on that gear. So essentially your guy comes back to your hand, and you don't uh, get any reward out of it. So um, it's kind of good to be sitting there and keeping an eye on your, uh, where your guys are. Um, now, uh, there's a spot here on the board that has like a little head... Uh, like almost like a little headdress type of thing. Uh, this is actually the first player marker. And anybody can sit there and place a character there and take the first player marker. Uh, now one of the interesting rules is let's say nobody on the turn places the character there. You'll actually get one of these little corn things and put it on the gear and then advance it one tick. Um, what will happen is eventually you'll start seeing there's going to be a bunch of like single corns on the gears the longer that nobody picks up that first player marker and when finally a player does pick the first player marker they get to collect all the corn that was sitting on the gears for themselves so it's kind of like an incentive to keep the first player um, the first player marker going around now when it comes to actually placing your characters down when you place your first worker down, it does not cost you any corn. The only time it would cost you is, depending on which space you're putting them on, um, you may have to pay to put that character out. So if you put them in the first spot where there's no uh, spots whatsoever, it'll cost you zero corn. To go to the first spot, it'll cost you one corn, two corn, three, four, all the way up. So you can put them as high as you want to be able to do that. Um, however, let's say in a situation like this, Blue puts the player, uh, hit goes first and puts him on the zero corn and that's the end of his turn and green wants to place his uh, worker on the green gear. He will actually have to pay one corn to be able to place him down on that gear. Um, the other interesting thing is that when you go to actually place um, your workers down, you can place more than one, you just have to pay to place that worker down. So, if you go and want to place a, a second worker down, it will cost you one extra corn to place them down. If you place a, the, the third one, it will cost you three extra corn to place them down. So it's kind of interesting where you can sit there and throw all your guys down, but you're going to spend a lot of corn to do it. Um, so that's another strategy that I've seen that some people will hold on to their corn and hoard it and all that. Um, while others will sit there and, and spend some time. Um, and gameplay will, will go like this back and forth. Everybody will take turns either placing or, or picking up a, uh, a worker on their turn. Um, collect resources. Once you get enough resources, you can purchase buildings. Um, you can advance on the technology tracks and all that until you start getting some points. Uh, once, let's say, this guy spins around here to the brown part, you're actually, it'll tell you, um, right here, 
Uh, actually, it's on the light side, it's on the dark side. Uh, when you flip over that, you can't do uh, the two things. Sorry, had it backwards. Um, it actually shows you on the little player board here. So on the brown, you're going to sit there and feed your people. And then you're going to take a look at the god tracks where you are. Um, and then on the blue one, once you get to the first blue one, it shows you here. You're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to feed your people again. You're going to check the uh, god tracks again. But this time you will get resources as well. Um, and then you get the, uh, you switch over to the second age. Um, so it's pretty interesting on how they, uh, how they do that. Um, really, really interesting game. It goes back and forth. It just spins around now. Uh, one of the things that I will say about this game is there is a lot of stuff to do. Um, and it's really well done component wise. Um, you just don't get caught. Um, with too many ideas of what I want to do, what do I want to do? Uh, but essentially, as you go going, you know, you'll see these these tracks advance, and people will sit there and have their different things. There'll be various people on the on the uh, god tracks and all that. You'll be scoring points, so you'll be going around. Um, and essentially, the person that can most efficiently get points as they're going through there will be your winner of the game. There you have Zulkin, the Mayan calendar uh, from Czech Games. So my thoughts on this, um, I really, really enjoyed the way that the the simplification of your turn, in other words, on your turn you can either place out a character or pick up a worker, which I thought was really, really great. Um, I love how the way that they designed the game where you're... Currency is also your food, so you just don't go crazy uh, spending a bunch of like of your corn uh, to just put a bunch of guys out, take them all back in, uh, which is really really um, good in the game. Um, although it does like add some depth of strategy to it, especially like when you're building the buildings, like I showed you, um, they actually have farms that you can get, which will if you get one, it automatically gives one food to all your workers and then if you get a second one of those you basically are feeding all your people no matter what so then at that point your corn goes from being hey I need to save this for food and for money to hey now this I can use this for money. Um, the biggest thing about the game that uh, really made it interesting for me is the fact that there is a lot to do in the game. Um, there's just so many different things for you to do and the interesting thing about this game now I've played this game several times since I've owned it um, the one thing that makes this game super interesting is the sheer fact that you look at everything on the board and you're like alright I want to do this and this and this and this and what really limits you on what you can actually do is how much time you have because every turn that goes by that middle gear is turning and turning and turning and I've actually had games where I was playing it with some of my friends and there I could see them mapping out like this is what I want to do this is what I want to do and then they look over and they're like wait how much time do we have left and I was like well we got this much left on the gear to turn and then you'd see that realization of like oh crap I'm not gonna have enough time to do what I want to do um, the interesting thing about this game, now I put this on uh, on my list um, of uh, it turned into a 13, 13 games that I think every uh, or thirteen game every Euro games that I think everybody should own from Michael Action. Um, what I found interesting about this is um, it's a Euro that really like changes the, the visual of the the. The game itself with the gear that turns the other gears is interesting. Like I know Tom Vassell basically said in his review for this that the, the one downside to the gear is all it basically does is you could have just a track where everything moves and it would be the same thing, which is true. Um, the thing I like about that is the fact that that middle gear just turns everything for you, like an automatic system type of thing. Um, and it really, um, unlike a lot of other Euros where you can just say okay I'm gonna go down this and this is where I'm gonna focus on the board and you'll win because you'll get a lot of points that way I have yet to see any strategy like that in going to one specific spot only that actually like 
guarantees you a win on the game itself. Um, Components-wise, um, if there is one thing um, that I will say um, that's really neat about this game, um, and I'll open it up here, and you know, because you'll see it, the little crystal skulls uh, that they put in that are supposed to be crystal skulls are like made out of plastic are just unbelievable. Um, it is the coolest thing ever um, to have that. And I like the breakdown of the actual game itself where different sections of the of the gears do different things, like one's for getting resources, one's for like making buildings, one's for advancing on some of the tracks. Um, and then you have that one where like you can get more workers or do other things like that. And then you have that one gear that is just straight victory points, but you need those crystal souls to skulls. So you have to send a worker to go pick up the crystal skull and then put a worker down to like sack, you know, give the crystal skull as, as tribute and then get those points for it. So I found that really, really interesting. And the, the, the biggest thing I would say about this game that was interesting is the first time I played it, I sat down and I played it and I looked at it and I was like, well, I don't know if I like this or not. And once you got to the end of the game where you're like, oh, now I see how everything comes together, um, it immediately made me want to play it again. Um, and that second game that I played, I played much better because I had seen how things worked out. Um, so it's definitely one of those, like, you'll play it more than once, more than likely the first time you play the game because you'll be trying to figure stuff out and then you'll see, oh, this is how all this stuff works together. And then, boom, you, you put it all together. Um, but I mean, it's, it's really, really one of those games where I've, I've, the more I've played this, the more I've enjoyed the game. Um, my wife hasn't played it yet. Um, and I'm looking to get her into uh, wanting to play this game. You know, now that I've had her play a couple more of the little, like more strategic ones, like the ones behind me, like Istanbul and stuff like that, where she kind of likes the whole thinking, more thinking to to the game itself, I have a feeling like this is going to be right up her alley because it really does make you think about what you want to do. Um, but overall for me, I, I would give this a like 9 out of 10. I'm dying to get the expansion pack that just came out, which is uh, the Tribes and something or other, which adds a little bit more variety to the game just to see how, how that plays. I've heard from other reviewers that it's a really great expansion to this. Um, but yeah, that is uh, Zulkin. I will give this a uh, 9 out of 10. Uh, Zoken by Czech, uh, from Czech Games. Um, really, really fun game. Um, really good, heavier Euro. Uh, but other than that, guys, um, click like and subscribe to our videos. Follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. And as I always say, guys, get out there and game. Take care.